Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Today, I'll be telling you about a little bit my own research journey. So I am an electrical engineer who has studied electronic devices and circuits to build faster and better processors for your laptops. And recently, I'm more interested in a different kind of computation system, human brain. So my transition from electronics to brain has not been an easy one. And the reason for that is two systems are completely different from each other. Brain is a reconfigurable com computation system which is like adaptive and self-learning. It operates on real-life problems with many sensory inputs, a lot of noise and variation. And in spite of that, brain computation is extremely robust. And different from your laptop where memory and the processor are separated from each other, in the brain, computation and storage occurs at the same time in the same place. And it's very compact and it basically consumes less power than a light bulb. So it's not quite fair to compare brain with a laptop, so let's take a look at a more fair comparison, brain and a supercomputer. Do you know the supercomputer from Jeopardy, Watson? So do you actually think that you have seen a real picture of Watson? No? I don't have his picture, but I have his cousin's picture, blue jean from IBM, you see on the right. A man is standing next, next to it. So it's huge, it's bigger than my home because it has thousands of processors in it, and my laptop has only one of them. And it basically runs on megawatts of power. So there are some research groups across the world who use supercomputers to do like large-scale brain simulations to better understand brain, and this chart shows the progress in supercomputing over time. So the good news is, Around like 2020 or up, up there, like we will have enough computational power to simulate 100% of brain in real time. But the bad news is it will require a dedicated nuclear power plant. <laughs> so, so, so why is this so costly to simulate this 1.4 liter magical black box? So the answer is easy. So we are taking a digital supercomputer and program it to compute like brain while we ignore all the architectural and operational differences and most importantly without really understanding how brain does computation. So my approach to this problem is basically starting from the bottom, starting from the most basic computational elements in the brain. So inside human brain, there are like 10,000 10, times more synapses than neurons. Synapses are these tiny interconnects that connect neurons to each other, and they are the most abundant element in the brain and responsible for the massive parallelism and dense interconnectivity of the brain. And in the last couple of decades, we learned from neuroscience studies that synapses also participate in brain computation. So how do they compute? by simply changing their connection strength as a function of neural activity, which is called synaptic plasticity. Uh, a famous theory on that, which is known as Hebbian learning, suggests neurons that fire together wire together, neurons that fire out of sync lose their link. And inspired from this simple concept, <laughs> we basically went into our lab and built an electronic version of this nanoscale, uh, this tiny synapses using some uh, advanced nanotechnology and fabrication techniques. So you see a picture of my two terminal synaptic device which is like 70, as small as like 75 nanometers. And it can also implement similar plasticity characteristics as a biological synapse. So uh, with these synaptic devices, we basically built some synaptic grids. inspired from the hippocampus region of the brain. So if you haven't heard about hippocampus, hippocampus is a part of brain which basically plays very important roles in learning, um, in learning special navigation and making new memories. So with this synaptic grid, like we have these metal lines as neuronal fibers, and at the intersection we have the synaptic devices. So the synaptic grid can be used some, to do some brain-like computation, such as it can associatively learn patterns or like sequences of events over time. So is it that simple? Not exactly. So if we take a closer look inside the hippocampus using some advanced neuroimaging techniques, on the right you, you can see that like neurons are firing in a completely asynchronous way. They are like disconnected. And just a few millimeters away, the neurons connected to the ones on the right side are all in harmony. You'll see that they will fire all together at once, synchronously. So by just looking at these firing patterns, it's very difficult to understand what is going on, because we don't have any control on that. So for us, 
The, the next big challenge is basically use these synaptic devices to probe neural circuits with high precision and control. And hopefully, by connecting real biological neurons to electronic synapses, we will better understand how neural circuits are formed in the small scale and how they compute. And with this knowledge, we will hopefully have more brain-compatible neural prosthetic devices and more targeted treatments for network-level disorders such as epilepsy. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.